Hey, Tyler, Theater Design Company. Going to do a bit different video today, um, something that's a little bit different than our typical like instructional videos or theater tours. Um, and what we're going to do is uh, I've added the uh, OpenAI Chat GPT extension to uh, my Google Chrome desktop. And uh, this morning I was playing around with it, kind of just asking it some basic questions related to my business. And so what I'm going to do is ask it um, with a video, uh, kind of the 10 most frequently asked questions I get as a home theater installer and dealer. And uh, basically, these questions will be, uh, you know, as follows. And then at the very end, if you want to uh, ask some questions in the comments, I, I would love to make a second video that also, is ex you know, explains uh, what your questions are. We'll use the OpenAI GPT to uh, ask and answer those, and then I can comment on those as well. So first and foremost, what we'll do is uh, these are the questions I think that I came up with. What is a good size uh, home theater room? How big should my projection screen be? How many speakers should a home theater have? What are some good home theater speakers? What's the best home theater subwoofer? And then is Dolby Atmos worth the cost? Super common question for us. What's the best 4K projector to use? That one will be interesting. What is the best way to play 4K movies? My guess is going to say Kaleidoscape. How important are good HDMI cables? And the last one is what gauge speaker wire should I have? Those two will be a big battle uh, on forums, so it'll be interesting to see what it comes up with. And then as I mentioned, if you can comment and uh, below with some questions, I'll make a second video if there's enough uh, questions asked. Thanks a lot. All right, so let's jump into this. Uh, if you watched the first minute or so of the video, you're gonna know our questions we're gonna ask here, but we're gonna uh, enter them into Google. We got the chat GPT extension and let's see how much this can help us uh, design or build a theater or get some good advice. So a lot of these I already have typed in, but for our first one is uh, what's a good size home theater room. Here's our response. So this is interesting. I'm in the U S giving us uh, meters. So that's intriguing. Um, and it's giving us volume. So it hasn't done that before, and I've entered this in a few times as I'm making this video. I'm actually just gonna enter it again, see if it changes. So this is another one that I've seen pop up, and this is a really accurate one in my opinion. Minimum size, 12 feet wide, 15 feet deep. So they're not giving you a square room size, they're giving you a rectangle, which is correct. And uh, they're giving you a bunch of variances here uh, as far as screen size, number of seats, so on. So that's super good advice. Um, I would concur with all that. That's pretty neat. Let's jump on to our next one, which is uh, how big should our projection screen be? And I think this one we're going to need to add some more information to get a real firm answer, but let's see what it says. So this is really a pretty accurate response with them, um, even getting into some details with, you know, 1.25, 2.5 to the distance, same for 16 by 9. Doesn't really go over anything over as far as scope screens or anything like that, but I didn't think it would. And so if we wanted to add that or modify it a little bit, you can see I've got a question up here. Let's go in a 12 foot wide room and see what it says. So that's interesting. It's staying on a 12 foot wide room, 60 to 75 inches. Um, you know, for a living room, most living rooms are 12 to 16 feet wide. So a 60 or 75 inch TV on the wall is pretty correct. Um, I would say for more of a dedicated home theater room, um, you could get up to that 110 inch or so size. So again, good information though, nothing wrong with what they said. So let's get into question number three here, which is uh, how many speakers should a home theater have? And again, I think I've typed that one in, but maybe not. I did. So let's see what our chat GPT says on that. Typical 5.1, five speakers, subwoofer for being the point one, And then it's giving you the option saying 7.1, so some back lefts and rights, so that's 7.1. And then uh, speaker configuration based on room size. So that's all super good information. That's when we go out and walk a room, that's what we, uh, we look at as a room size and how many speakers can get in there. And ob obviously things like, is there windows and doors where speakers are gonna go? But again, that's good information. Um, let's look at, uh, the speaker question here, which is question number four. So what are some good home theater speakers? I think I probably typed that one in, maybe not. I did. 
So this one's going to come up with clip ref. Ah, see, this is weird, in my opinion. Yeah, so they're bringing up budget, but in my opinion, and I've never heard of Q Acoustics. That's an interesting. I'll have to look that company up. Uh, Def Tech makes good stuff. I don't, I don't call a sound bar. So I'm at the beam. That's a sound bar and sub. And honestly, that a beam sound bar and sub is entirely too much money for what the Sonos cost. Uh, Vizio, Elac, Clips Reference Theater Pack. I mean, almost all those are sub one thousand dollars in home theater system of of any quality. You're going to be looking at twenty five hundred plus sub cost, in my opinion. Um, let's do a great just for the heck of it. See if it comes up with anything higher end. Super intrigued on this one. So clip re reference R that doesn't surprise me. Um, clips is a huge speaker company. They sell the most speakers of uh, any Kef Q three fifties. We sell those They're great bookshelf speakers. They'd make a pretty good home theater speaker. Got some deaf techs again. Elac. It's a pretty good company. Again, a Q Acoustics. So I'll be looking them up the end after this video. So jumping here, let's uh, let's jump on to what's the best subwoofer. And uh, that'll be an interesting one too. So what is the best? If I can learn how to type. And again, I forgot to put the question mark in, which is what kicks in the uh, chat GPT. So sorry about that. All right, let's see what it says. Low frequency, yeah, of course. Oh, well, you can tell I'm making the video in real time. So what is the best home theater subwoofer? Not what is a home theater subwoofer. So two of the three they picked out there, that SVS PB2000 is an amazing subwoofer for the money. The Eclipse Reference, I mean, I've sold a bunch of them, but I don't really recommend them. When we get into these Clip ref Reference, we'll spend a few hundred dollars more and get the SVS. Yeah, the JL Audio Fathom, uh, we don't sell JL Audio, but we've installed several of them, and that thing uh, literally destroys both of those. So that's intriguing. Um, didn't come up with anything else. I'm surprised because I see on the forums like Rail and a bunch of those. It didn't come up with those, and it didn't come up with uh, any DIY recommendations about building your own, which is also intriguing. Okay, so we've done questions uh, one through five. We ended off on the uh, subwoofer question, and now we're going to get into some, my opinion, some of the funner questions. So uh, this one here is Dolby Atmos worth the cost. So personal preference, that's probably true. So I would say that's right. It didn't give us any any other information on Dolby Atmos. Um, I noticed if I type this in, um, again, it'll give us a different platform or a different answer. And so this is equipment, technology, so on. And apologize the ads, nothing I can do about that. Um, it's gonna show up in the video, so don't even know what that crap is. So it says cost may be worth it. That makes sense. If you're looking at the normal Google, uh, search it says yes and it gives you a movie streaming platforms and it says it's worth it which i agree we sell a bunch of it uh let's go to our uh question here and uh, what is the best 4k projector to use in a home theater and interesting i need to get down so the chat gpt came down below a bunch of advertising So, what was our question? What is the best? So, I don't know. That's interesting because these none of these are the best projector by any means. Uh, they're all good, though. So, 295, this Epson, Optoma, N N5, all these are super similar, similar price points in some way within $1,000 of each other, I believe. Um, I did ask this question earlier this morning when I was building the video and playing around with it, and it came up with the Sony 995, the uh, 
NX9, and then it came up with, uh, again, this Epson 550, which I just know millions of people have bought the 550, which is a decent projector. Um, let's just let's get rid of home and just see what it says. And it said home theater, so that's interesting. So again, it said 295. Then it went 295 to the NX9. So I'm not sure where the chat GPD pulls this information from because um, you've got four it gave us recommendations and I can tell you right now a 295 versus an NX9 isn't even close and the NX9 and the Sony both beat the other two that it gave us so that's interesting and for those that don't buy a lot of projectors no but I mean an NX9 is a $25,000 projector 24,000 a 295 is a few years old and it was uh, I think we sold them for $49.99 so and then I don't even know these part numbers, but I want to say a couple thousand, under a thousand or around a thousand. So that's interesting. All right, so let's get to the last three questions here. And those will be um, basically going to be looking at what's the best way to play 4K movies. And I did this before when I started working on the video. So I did actually did movies. And I did movies, movie player. And I'm going to do movie player because we're talking more equipment here. So media player connected to 4K TV, of course. So streaming, Amazon, NVIDIA Shield. And these guys always say gaming consoles. Forum does it too. So I mean, and, you know, I tell you right now, unless you play a lot of video games, um, and you, know, you don't have wife, don't have kids, someone that doesn't do their video games, uh, using an Xbox or any of these to play movies is really not the best idea. Uh, standalone, so that makes sense. I'm in a, an Oppo, uh, Sony, which is actually in our showroom. Um, didn't say Kaleidoscape, which I'm surprised, um, although that's a pretty bespoke piece of equipment. Um, so anyway, that's interesting. It's uh, kind of neat to see. And let's see. So now a couple of the ones that are the last two, which are my excited ones, are how important are good HDMI cables? So let's do that one. Uh, how important? And I type this one in. This will be intriguing. So this is an interesting response because it's actually not even close to being correct. So as long as the cable is functioning properly, that's sure um, until you start getting into longer lengths. Or if you start getting into some of the 4K, 8K content, you you have to have a, a high-end cable. We always do the fibers from Binary or SSF Clearline. Um, that's uh, interesting. Let's just say our good. Let's say how important our So we'll expand that quite a bit. Let's see what it pulls up now. So again, it didn't go over any of the formats of HDMI or any of that. So that's always something I try to explain to the customers, you know, 2.0, 2.1, some of that stuff. But uh, overall, I mean, that's a pretty solid answer. And so last one, um, what gauge speaker wire should I have? Um, and I'm going to do this a little different for a home theater. And let's see what their response is to this. So 12 to 16, the most common. 12, 14, 16 are the most common wires. If you're doing 8 gauge or 10 gauge, you're just a maniac. And a pretty basic question there. Uh, let's add speakers to it because I thought it would give us some more information on that. Well, interesting. 16 to 18, sufficient. Yeah, not really. So... Uh, there it goes. So it, it, it answered exactly how I would have answered that. So jump it down. If it gets over 50 feet, start jumping to that 14 or 12 gauge. Um, you got to realize most background or, or whole house audio systems and homes are 16-4 wire. Um, and those runs are 100, 125 feet sometimes. So anyway, thanks for watching the video. Uh, 
ask, ask some questions below. I'd love to make another one of these where I can just type in the questions and uh, go through that same type of format. Thanks a lot.